Greetings and welcome to the Saco City Council meeting for Monday, June 21st, 2021. Call the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. Let the record reflect that all councilors are present, including City Administrator Canrath. <clears throat> at this time, I'd like to invite everybody to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is located behind City Administrator Canrath. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, everyone. <clears throat> a couple of things under general. Uh, item 13, uh, executive session is not ready tonight, so we'll give no executive session this evening. Uh, and then I just want to thank uh, Saco Main Street, Executive Director Rob Biggs, Program Director Molly Donlin, and all the sponsors and volunteers uh, that made this Sunday's Father's Day uh, banana split uh, event uh, happen and, and be spectacular. The Saco claimed the prize of the largest banana split in the state of Maine uh, at 120 feet, three inches. So again, thank you to all the sponsors, all the volunteers, everyone who came out and enjoyed some ice cream and enjoyed some good times and laughs. Uh, and then everyone who made that event such a success. So thank you very much. That brings us to item five, committee correspondence to council. Any committee correspondence at this time? No committee correspondence at this time. Uh, brings us to item six, public comment. City Administrator Canrath, have we received any public comment for tonight's meeting? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have several pieces of public comment. I'll go ahead and read into the record. Thank you. So, our first comes to us from uh, Katrina Botello. She writes, uh, greetings council. I am writing to support Riverwinds Farm in their desire to help self-sponsored events on their property. Firstly, Riverwinds Farm is an absolutely stunning property that should be shared with all who wish to see it. It is in a rural setting that embraces the agriculture surrounding it. It is a place for laughter, dancing, food, drinks, sunsets, uh, that makes you stop and take a picture and it is a place that reminds you uh, just how beautiful Saku is. It is a place for happy, joyous occasions that a place uh, to mix and mingle with the community. A place that is not overrun by tourists, a place that pays taxes and employs local people. There is no other event venue in Saku that also has lodging. Secondly, what is the difference between a wedding and someone like me enjoying some live local music in a lovely setting? None. Riverwinds has always had a 10 p.m. cutoff for noise to respect their neighbors. I see no difference in 75 cars for a wedding versus 75 cars to support local musicians. One of the nicest things about this venue is that it is a uh, multi-purpose venue. It was just as lovely to make uh, Christmas reads in the winter uh, and mix with other women as it was to listen to live music during the summer. Thirdly, Riverwinds employs local people, many of which are young people. I know that Saco has concerns about the younger population moving away, so why deny the younger population a place to work? More events mean more workers are needed. There's a trickle-down effect by not allowing them to offer self-sponsored events. Local vendors, specifically beach dogs, provide food for attendees of local shows. The owners of that food cart uh, are my parents. Less events means less money for local self-employed taxpayers. I know the Riverwinds tries to source as much as possible from local Saco vendors. Less events, again, means less money for local folks. This venue is very special, and I encourage you to visit uh, it at your leisure. As a 30-something, I do not find it appealing to bump elbows with tourists in OOB or deal with parking in Portland. And Riverwinds provides a nice, enjoyable place to enjoy a casual night out with like-minded people. I appreciate your time in reading these points. And in the interest of Riverwinds Farm and local uh, Saco residents. I hope you will consider allowing self-sponsored events for Riverwinds Farm. Thank you, Katrina Patello. Our next piece comes from uh, Jim LaBelle, who's the director of Bitterford Saco uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Bitterford and Saco Chamber of Commerce is in full support of Riverwinds' request to be able to host self-initiated events at their place of business. Their facility is a beautiful attraction for the city and a major venue for Saco to host local residents as well as folks from out of town for weddings and other major functions. Uh, who spend money at other local businesses in addition to attending events at Riverwinds. As a venue for future music events, Riverwinds is one of, uh, one of a few, one of few, if any, venues in the city where people can come together to gather and socialize, 
creating an attraction for the Saco region and drawing people to further interact with the businesses in the city of Saco. The more rural and separate location on a large lot, along with their professional diligence and managing events, leads us to conclude that any potential downsides would be negligible to non-existent. The region continues to attract more and more people and supporting this entertainment option will further that progress with Saco's uh, business friendly reputation enhanced in the process. For these reasons, we hope that you, the city council, uh, supports this effort for an important and growing business in the city. Thank you, Jim LaBelle, Executive Director of Bitterford and Saco Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our next piece comes to us from uh, Julie and Peggy Harris, 103 Loudon Road. She writes, good evening. We are Julie and Peggy Harris and live at 103 Loudon Road. Uh, we are writing in regard to Riverwinds Farm Contract Zone Amendment in which they seek to expand their uses to fully open to the public events. We are a horse farm and share property lines with Riverwinds Farm. We have concerns about the impact of open to the public events. We already have had our peaceful enjoyment of our rural property interrupted by music and loudspeakers from next door. We already, we already have had to go inside and close windows due to noise. Uh, that they had a whole concert series lined up uh, for last summer was troublesome. We already have had people on our property looking for parking and wandering through our barns, saying that they are attending an event at Riverwinds. Uh, how much will this increase with public events? Our former neighbor at 107 Louder Road protested the building of Riverwinds Farm large indoor uh, arena. She was told uh, by the city council she lived in a rural area and should expect agricultural buildings. By that same token, uh, we live in a rural area and should not expect the issues one has with living near commercial venues. We are not concerned uh, with whatever events are held at Riverwinds Farm. Our concern is how this will affect our rural way of life. If Maine summers are short, we don't want to spend them indoors. Thank you, Julia and Peggy Harris. Uh, our next piece comes from uh, Susan Littlefield of 171 Simpson Road, uh, dear Mayor Doyle and Council. I'm very concerned with the potential expansion of allowed uses at Riverwind Farm because of the precedent that it sets and strongly agree with the planning board's decision to send unanimous negative findings to the council. This business operates under a contract zone agreement, one of several created in the C1 zone in recent years. Their current contract already allows activities that are not compatible with single family homes and farming related uses on the idea that there is something unique about the situation that warms this exception. Commercial or institutional use of the C1 zone when not truly farming related or quiet in home occupations diminishes the essence of why people choose to live in the C1 zone and why others enjoy visiting it. I am concerned in general that the CZAs are granted by using the criteria that the requests on the site are somehow unique. The rest of the neighborhood has no way to defend its own uniqueness, except by appealing to the planning board and council during public comment and often being viewed as NIMBYs by the council. Compare the Riverwinds plan to the rustic wedding barn proposal that the planning board voted down on Heath Road in 2018 after Riverwinds was given their CZA. Both Riverwinds and 95 Heath Road wanted to operate as event venues providing music and food. Riverwinds was accepted, 95 Heath Road was not, with negative votes on all four standards. If the planning board voted down the 95 Heath Road facility because it was concerned about the effects on the surrounding neighborhood, then why would they, why would they even consider uh, the consideration now of expanding the impact on Loudon Road residents with even more commercial uses that create noise, increase traffic on more days and evenings, and sets a very concerning precedent for the C1 rural residential zone. Sincerely, Susan Littlefield, 171 Simpson Road. Uh, next, uh, this comes to us from uh, Inga Brown, 161 Simpson Road. Uh, dear Mayor and Council members, I'm writing tonight with concern over the omissions and contradictions in this evening's council packet for action item B, public hearing Riverwinds Farm contract zone uh, amendment. Uh, this letter serves as general remarks regarding uh, access to critical, accurate information via staff updates and council and planning board packets so that all stakeholders can be informed to make knowledgeable decisions and be engaged in public hearings. I would also kindly ask that Mayor Doyle continue to ensure that all speakers during tonight's Riverwinds public hearing identify themselves as SACO residents by giving their accurate address for the record. Missing or conflicting data regarding uh, crucial site plan requirements for Riverwinds, Riverwinds Farm are also identified below, and these comments are wholly separate from those I may offer during tonight's public hearing regarding the specific contract zone amendment request made by the applicant. Because tonight's council packet contains omissions for this specific action item, tonight's public hearing may prove to be superficial and potentially chaotic, uh, a potentially chaotic exercise. Public testimony is jeopardized and sidelined 
due to overt lack of key information. My own Ward 1 representative, Council Marshall Archer, made this very same observation and lament at the March 8th council meeting when conflicting information was included in the packet regarding Riverwind's application for a renewal of their special entertainment license, a license for the record that still cites comedy and dinner theater shows as types of permitted uses, which are not, uh, which is not the case per the CZA. Let me be clear, uh, thin or incomplete information is an ongoing issue regarding the Riverwind's project. It is very unfortunate and frustrating that new or clarifying information for this project might only be made available to the council for the second and final reading on July 12th, basically ensuring that the first reading held on May 24th and tonight's June 21st public hearing remain incomplete uh, or feeble at best while the farm continues to not meet basic sanitation, water and fire safety regulations to the legal satisfaction of state codes for the operation of an A2 banquet hall as well as City of Saco site plan approval conditions. As council knows, missing from tonight's uh, packet is city planner uh, Bob Hamblin's email response to me on uh, June 3rd that was copied to council, city staff, various stakeholders, and even the media for some strange reason. My original letter dated, uh, sent to Mr. Hamblin on March 17th, over two and a half months ago, raised numerous lingering questions the day after the March 16th planning board meeting. My questions were related to life safety issues for those projects, such as sprinklers, permanent plumbing and sanitation needs, as well as adequacy and safety of the farm's water supply. Mr. Hamlin's response identified, among other things, that Riverwind's barn is classified as a permanent structure and also as an A2 banquet hall based on occupancy level of over 100 people, and therefore does, does indeed require a substantial array of permanent toilets and sinks per state plumbing code and with required sanitation and septic systems. Uh, weddings at the farm feature 175 seated guests in the barn or 250 with additional outside seating. Moreover, as a now identified A2 banquet hall, the barn also is required to have sprinklers, which stands in contrast to the information presented to Councilor Berman by Code Enforcement Director Dave Toomey at the March 8th council meeting when Mr. Toomey stated a two hour firewall was deemed sufficient to meet fire codes. This type of critical new information should have been updated in this evening's packet for full transparency and review. Additionally, council was copied on the separate letter I sent to Mr. Toomey on April 10, 2021, which formally documented several of the non-permitted open to the public events held at Riverwinds Farm, many of which were not identified uh, by, the camp, by the city in its August 31st, 1st, 2021 violations letter to uh, Ms. Austin. If a contract zone recipient openly instructs its horse show attendees on public online platforms to bring their own uh, spectators in their trucks or horse wagons due to lack of parking during concurrent wedding events at the property, a revealing picture of unchecked intense use emerges, one that has no limits on the number or type of events, no limits on participants um, on the property at any one time, and no data or limits on the amount of traffic generated. Please see City Engineer Joe LaVarriers, February 9th, 2021 email uh, on page 24 of tonight's packet that outlines these and other concerns. One can also reference page 19 in tonight's packet where Dick Lambert's 2018 email to Bob Hamlin raised unresolved and unclear questions regarding the need for permanent plumbing and sanitation systems, as well as sprinklers of the barn does indeed classify as an A2 banquet hall. Yet here we are three years. Twenty twenty one, with no further clarity and more alarmed about missing information regarding con contract zone projects in the C1 Rural Conservation Zone and how related council and planning board packets do not reflect the full record on the requirements for these complex, often controversial projects. Riverwinds Farm Farm's intentions to becoming a fully open to the public events venue, in addition to a private functions location, brings to light the long term effects of spot zoning, how it divides neighborhoods and upends patterns of established land use by special interest groups who often flout the set of parameters and approved uses of their CZA, an agreement that is approved under the discretion and quote unquote pleasure of the council. So it's really Inga Brown, 161 Simpson Road. Uh, lastly, we have uh, a message from Marianne and Tony Barbano. Uh, dear council, my name Is Marion Barbano and my husband Tony, and I was the night of my husband's 55th birthday party. I had entertainment, food, and beverages for all of our guests. 
We all knew each other well and practiced safe social distance. The majority of people present were part of the birthday celebration. Riverwinds is an exceptional place with amazing professional service. Beth and Gina are doing a fabulous job for both weddings and music events. I do own a restaurant bar in Wyndham and have several, have owned several in Old Orchard Beach. There is always uh, that one neighbor that complains about everything, especially any music or laughter. A sad life if you don't enjoy the beautiful laughter of people celebrating uh, or talented musicians. We have attended several events at Riverwinds, and I encourage you to support Gina and Beth in their continuing live entertainment events for the public. Sincerely, uh, Marianne and Tony Barbano. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> at this time, open an, uh, a public comment to members of the public. Members of the public who would like to speak uh, to the council, please use the raise hand feature of the Zoom platform or star nine. Uh, if you plan on speaking about uh, either the contract zone at 507 Main Street, the zone change request at 372 Main Street, or Riverwind Farms contract zone, there will be public hearings uh, on those items uh, under action items. So uh, there will be opportunities to speak on those individual items, uh, or you can speak during the public comment as well. First up, we have Robert LeBlanc. Again, those folks, please use uh, raise hand feature and then star nine if you're using a phone. And then just as you're uh, allowed to speak, please go ahead and state your name and address for the record. Uh, up first, we have Robert LeBlanc. Robert, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record. Uh, my, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert LeBlanc. I live at 36 Hall Avenue in Saka. I am a, a vendor to Riverwind Farms. I sell them uh, food products, paper products. They're a, a customer in good standing. Very easy, very nice to work with. Um, that, that's my first point. My second point is, as a resident of Saka, I really enjoy and I really enjoyed going to those music events that they were allowed to have last year that I understand they're not being allowed to have uh, anymore. And we need some sort of a change to their, to their zoning. So I, I want to speak on behalf of that because going to those events, it's not a tourist event. There is a lot of local people. I see a lot of friends that I haven't seen in a long time. It, it provides a great service for us to go somewhere and get together. I think it's a tremendous asset to the community to, in this day and age when everybody is spending more and more time alone, more and more time on Zoom meetings at work and not going into business offices anymore, to have a venue like that where people can get out of the house and go see friends and bring their families and spread out on the grass and listen to some music. And I've heard, I, I listened to those other comments that was read from some of the neighbors. And I understand that those concerns are legitimate concerns. But I also feel that uh, as a council and as a zoning planning board, that we should be able to find some sort of common ground and some sort of compromise and, and give them, you know, certain times the music has to be off. They got to have certain signage for parking. They can't have anybody parking in somebody else's yard or anything like that. But I believe with a proper signage, and I believe with, if it's run properly, that that venue can provide a great service to our community and really be an asset to the community for the Saco residents to enjoy. And then that's the comments I'd like to make tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Up next, we have Barbara Coleman. Barbara, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Barbara Coleman, for Christopher Terrace, Saco, Maine, 04072. Um, citizens, councilmen, and, and persons, as well as the mayor and city administrator. I really appreciated the presentation that was done by Bernstein Shore and the attorneys several weeks ago. 
particularly focusing first on the public session of the law that many individuals overlook when discussing FOIA. There is two parts to that statute. I particularly like the fact of them explaining how clearly what a public session is. And a public session is counselors not going behind and polling and discussing what should be being done during the public meeting. An example was a counselor announced that they had polled and spoken to a number of counselors, and they felt that the particular person being voted upon for or being placed into the position on a committee was not the appropriate person and questioned the judgment of why. That particular discussion should take place in the public eye where everyone can understand from each of the individuals that we have elected why these decisions are being made. That is called transparency. This is what we have requested for years. Now, this would be different if this was a public emergency that the mayor and the city administrator had to pull the council because of an emergency. And as soon as we know it's an emergency, we need to make sure our communications director is notified so she can notify the appropriate press, whether TV or paper, so that we are on record that this happened, because this is where we would find out and trace back why it didn't occur during a meeting. It also should be recorded somewhere in place in our record so that we could look back upon it. The other piece that is a problem, and this has been a year long process, and I again today approached individuals and appropriate parties. I do not understand why when the Bernstein Shore said, what is a public document? And it's almost everything that is done in that city hall. We have such a difficult time obtaining it, particularly when it's already been created. And the person is unable to access the system. So there is no way I can gain access to your, I'm not a hacker. I'm not gonna learn to be a hacker at my age. But the issue remains is the information I'm looking for would then allow me to open up like the contingency fund. I can then look what has been spent out of the contingency fund because I've seen it in an Excel spreadsheet. That is Ms. public Coleman, transparency. Ms. Coleman, I, thank I you. Know my uh, three can minutes, you just please wrap up? Your three minutes is over. Well, no one else's three minutes have it. But the other thing I have, and it, it, this is very simple. I tried calling in on the phone number that you guys have on the website. I could not get it to work. I am not sure if it's the correct number, but the number that I'm showing here on the on my um, car does not even match the number that is on your session. So I'm not sure why that phone number that you listed is not working properly. But I attempted it four times. Could somebody please check that out? Or oh, and add one more thing, click it as a link so I can just simply call it from my phone. That would be much helpful for a number of people. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Up next, we have Ron Giles. Ron, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Uh, and if, again, for anyone uh, on the Zoom call, uh, if you're looking to speak about the River Winds Farm contract zone or zone change request for 372 Main Street or the contract zone at 507 Main Street, you can speak during this public comment or you can speak during the public hearings, which will be later on this evening. Uh, so again, uh, 
it's it's either or it's either at public comment or during the public hearing uh, when it comes up. Uh, Mr. Giles, go ahead. Well, I'm, I really want to speak when the public hearing comes out, but I wanted to give a little history on that intersection. And to give us only three minutes is extremely unfair for when you give developers all the time they want. So with that, if you're not going to let me have both opportunities, I'll wait till you come up with the contract zone which I don't believe is the right. Thank you, Ron. Up next, we have Eric Nichols. Eric, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Hello, my name is Eric Nichols. I live at 143 Smutty Lane, um, right around the corner from Riverwinds Farm, which I'm going to um, voice my support for. Um, I think they should be allowed to do self-sponsored shows. Um, I think it's a great asset to the community. Um, my wife and I enjoy attending events there ourselves, and we would you know, very much look forward to, um, you know, whatever they have to offer. Very well run uh, business and um, I'm in full support of, um, you know, them allowing to be self-sponsored shows. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. That is the last of the raised hands. So we are moving on from public comment onto item seven of the agenda, which is the approval of minutes for June 7, 2021. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Councilor Gunn, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Purdy. Any discussion on the minutes? Roll call vote on the minutes. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? No. Motion passes 6 1 to approve the minutes. Moving on to item eight consent items. There's two items. Uh, there's item A, which is the uh, idea to add an additional council meeting on June 28th, uh, and then B, item B, certification of election results for June 8th, 2021 budget validation referendum election. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Councilor McPhail, is there a second? I'll second. Councilor Berman, any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote on the consent agenda. Council Archer? Aye. Council Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. That brings us to item nine, uh, action items. We have item A, a joint meeting with the school board. So uh, please bear with us as we promote school board members.
just making sure we didn't forget anyone. It looks like uh, we're, we're short uh, school board member Shea and school board member Preble. Mr. Mayor, uh, Shea, uh, school board member Shea is working. Couldn't make it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Okay, I, I think we're just missing uh, school board member Prem. Uh, with that, uh, I just wanna thank the school board for joining us in a non-Wednesday uh, meeting for you folks. So thank you for accommodating the council's schedule. Uh, thank you for Superintendent Ray joining us and, and your, your staff uh, for tonight's meeting. Uh, first, we will begin with a budget update from the schools, and then we will start talking about state funding discussion. So, Superintendent Ray, I believe you'll be leading us off, or will it be Finance Director Di Donato? So, we'll start tonight with Jason as he talks about the year-end balances and where we believe we're going to be on June 30th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yet, yeah, we are still on track with what last month's projection was. Uh, we're anticipating a uh, year-end surplus of just about 450 to half a million dollars. Um, essentially what that does is it brings our fund balance uh, for the end of this year to uh, a negative 462,000. So it cuts about half of it uh, in place. Um, we do still have a few small things um, that we're looking into. We have to finalize our Thornton Academy's bill, um, which we're hoping to do that within the next week or so. Um, as well as we have our, our last minute retirement payouts and year end uh, accruals that we'll be doing over the next uh, several weeks in July. But um, moving forward, we're still very confident in where we are right now. And, um, and with additional, hopefully additional funds from the state might even be even better. So um, nothing's new has changed on our fund right now. Thank Does you, Finance Director DiDonato. <laughs> any, any questions at this time for Jason? No questions at this time. Thank you very much. S Superintendent Ray, will you be taking us down the state funding discussion? Yes. So uh, in your packet, there was a memo about the possibility of additional state funding. At this time, the legislature has not voted on the governor's supplemental budget, which would raise uh, funding for schools to 55%. It is my understanding that the legislature will go back in session on June 30th and hopefully handle some of these issues. Uh, if the governor's budget passes, um, SACO's in a, in a pretty decent position where we would receive 1.552 million in additional funds, plus another $81,000 has already been transferred over as we are able to successfully uh, resubmit and work with the DOE to get uh, the lease space funding for total in. Uh, and that's an extra 81,000. So we would have um, $1.633 million that was not part of the original budget package or voted on by the voters. So what this does is this uh, puts the school committee and the city council in a, uni in a unique position because I suspect that shortly um, the city will be thinking about uh, the commitment of taxes and setting the mill rate uh, to go out. <clears throat> What my suggestion would be and has been my suggestion to the school committee um, is that if we receive the additional funds that we would use 995,000 of those dollars to offset any negative fund balance that we have. That's the number that we had coming into the year and offsetting that. In addition, uh, recommending that we would use uh, 300,000 of this money to cover the new design costs um, for the school so that does not have to come out of uh, the city's funds. And then we would have um, another $337,000 uh, that could be put towards tax reductions or a capital fund, uh, meaning that the school department would be requesting $265,000 as the budget increase uh, towards taxes this year, instead of a number that was slightly over like $602,000. Uh, 
So those are things that the city council has the ability to do in conjunction with the school committee as it would not change what was voted on for the expenditure budget and would only be offsetting uh, the revenue side of the equation. I am happy to take any questions that people may have about uh, what's going on in Augusta and how this impacts us. Thank you very much, Superintendent Ray. Any questions for Superintendent Ray at this time? Councilor Berman. Yeah, hi, I'm just wondering if you can put together uh, Finance Director DiDonato's report that there'll be about a, a $500,000 balance that can go off to pay uh, some of the deficit with the request here for the 995,000 to do the same and, and, and how that pans out. So what we would, well, again, not knowing 100% that legislature will pass this, even though I suspect that they will. Um, if we this was successful, the money in the current budget that would then uh, count towards carryover in the upcoming year so that we could go through the audited financials, we could take care of the um, negative fund balance using these funds, and then start the budget process uh, with carryover, which certainly would be something that would help us in the next year. What we would wanna be extremely careful with is that it would be my assumption that if funded at 55% again next year, which the governor has planned for, we would see probably an, a, another substantial amount of increase in state funding. So I would just caution that we are careful enough that we don't create a hole for ourselves a couple of years down the road and that we would appro uh, appropriately look at keeping uh, taxes as flat as we pro uh, possibly can while funding capital improvements or one-time costs versus costs that would you know, repeat themselves. So. Um, my thought process is that in another budget, we could be in a in very good situation if this comes through and then moving forward to take care of some of our capital needs throughout the school department. Thank you. School board member Preble. Thank you. I'm sorry I worked late tonight. Any other questions for Superintendent Ray or Finance Director DiDonato on the uh, budget update or state funding discussion? City Administrator Canrath. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, just a comment on timeline, uh, Jeremy, Jason, assuming the legislature passes this on June 30th, um, just as far as our commitment, we kind of need those numbers by, by mid to late July. I think July 19th is actually the date in which our assessor is, is finalizing those numbers. So sometime in that interim there, we would need to, uh, to uh, discuss what uh, would need to be our appropriation. So as soon as, as soon as the governor um, or the legislature passes something, then they release that to school. I think once there's a, a, a past budget, we would have a very good idea of what, how close that number with, is. And then that would take a council adjustment to the revenues um, for us to make that happen. Any other questions uh, for Superintendent Ray or Finance Director DiDonato? Any general discussion uh, from either the school board or the city council? Okay. Uh, just want to thank the school board again for coming to tonight's meeting and, and joining us in the joint meeting. Uh, and again, thank you to the superintendent and his staff for joining us this evening. Uh, and then just thank you for all the good work you've done uh, thus far on behalf of the community, both the school board and the superintendent and staff. So uh, thank you very much. And with that, I feel free to stay on the meeting if you'd like or, uh, or enjoy a, a Monday evening to yourselves. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, bear with us, folks, as we
get back down to the council. Members, which I think all seven are still here. Okay. That brings us to item uh, B of the agenda on page seven in your packet, and that is a public hearing on Riverwind Farms contract zone amendment. Council Arch. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Riverwinds Farm contract zone was approved by City Council in July 2015, which allowed the establishment of an educational horseback riding program, a use not otherwise allowed in the C1 zone. Beth Austin, proprietor of Riverwinds Farm and Estate, then sought approval for an amendment to the contract zone, which was granted by the Council in September 2017, allowing the establishment of a venue for hosting private events such as weddings, graduation parties, and similar events on the property uh, place of public assembly. Ms. Austin now proposes to amend the contract zone again, seeking approval to hold self-sponsored events on the property, which would allow public events in, such as comedy shows, dinner theater, music, holiday shows, special community classes, events, and open houses. The planning board reviewed the proposed amendment at its March 16, 2021 meeting and voted 5-0 to forward a negative recommendation to council. I move to open the public hearing. Motion has been made by Councilor Archer, second by Councilor McPhail to open the public hearing. Any discussion? Roll call vote to open the public hearing. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to open the public hearing at 7 12 p.m. Public hearings now open. Those members who wish to speak to the City Council regarding the Riverwinds Farm contract zone amendment, please use the raise hand feature of the Zoom platform or star nine. Council Member Gunn? Yes. Uh, up first, we have uh, Zoom identifier, Nancy. Nancy, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Hi, uh, my name is Nancy Levesque. I live at 111 Bradley Street in Saco. Uh, my experience with uh, River Winds was first as a guest at an event and actually now I bartend there per diem. And I can affirm that there are no differences in the venues um, operating, hosting a, a private event, such as a wedding or a, pu or a public music show. They're very, very much the same. Music shows events are half the duration than that of a wedding. There is no difference in the impact of traffic. Events end at quiet time, regardless of if they're contracted events or self-sponsored. There are no other event venues like this in Saco. I've lived here all my life. Um, and it's really something that the community needs. Um, it offers destination lodging for out-of-state clients. So I wanted to just voice my support for the local economy. And I also support the contract zone amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Up next, we have Kristen Doughty. Kristen, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Kristen Dowdy, please go ahead and unmute. State your name and address for the city council. My apologies, I have it under control now. <laughs> My name is Kristen Dowdy. <laughs> My name is Kristen Dowdy. I reside at 58 McKenney Road, Saco, Maine. I have attended both private and self-sponsored events at Riverwind Farm and Estate and enjoyed both thoroughly. 
As a community member, I've never noticed anything but a positive impact on the city of Saco by this venue. I and my family travel Loudon Road frequently and have never experienced a traffic issue due to any event at Riverwinds. As an attendee of events, I have always found them, whether self-sponsored or private, to be well-run, safe, and in compliance with the city noise ordinance. I enjoy the sense of community the self-sponsored events provide, especially the Christmas event where even my youngest daughter can gather with her friends to enjoy the festivities. There are no other venues in this large city that offer such a sense of community. I wholly support Riverwinds Farm and Estate being granted the right to continue offering self-sponsored events and I look forward to attending them again. Thank you for your time. Kristen, thank you very much. Uh, up next, we have Cynthia Chadwick Granger. Cynthia, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Good evening. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Excellent. <laughs> Good evening, councilors and Mr. Mayor. Um, Cynthia Chadwick Granger, 3 Sean Place, Saco. Um, I just wanted to come on briefly. I have spoke about this before. Um, what I would like to say is that, you know, I have my own wedding business for over 12 years now. I've been involved in the wedding industry. I have done weddings at this venue. And I have to say that Beth is very professional and runs a tight ship over there. I am so impressed that we could have this type of venue in Saco. We have a population of over 19,000, and I apologize for not having the exact number, but we're big enough to do this, and we should be able to do this, and we should be pro-business. We should be helping people, make them be successful, and offer these types of things. Um, so I don't see where the problem is. And, and we're really good, we have good people to monitor things and watch over things and if something goes wrong. And if it doesn't, you know, if something happens in the future, then we, we take care of it. But not letting a business come in and not having a, allowing this to happen, I think is just not right. It's not right. Um, she's been functioning. I've been part of it. I've done weddings there. I've attended events there. Everything has always been done the way it should be done. Um, so being a business owner myself, being involved in the wedding industry for a very long time, and everyone knowing me in the community, I would not get on here tonight and I would not speak on behalf of it and wanting it if I didn't think that it was the right thing to do. So I just wanted to share that tonight with you. Think about this. Um, I think it's a good thing, and I think we should go forward. Thank you for your time, and thank you, everyone, for all the hard work that you do. Thank you, Cynthia. Up next, we have Lori Andrews. Lori, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record. Present your comments to the City Council. My name is Lori Andrews and I live at Nine Corey Drive, Saco. Um, and like Bob LeBlanc earlier, I am also a vendor. Um, and I've been in the events industry for over 20 years. And I remember when Beth was first getting this venue started, um, I was an intricate part of that and also helping her to hire Gina, who is the manager now. And she has done an amazing job. She knows the business inside and out, not only the venue, but she also knows the bar business and she knows how to control people and to keep things safe at all times. Um, and I think she's done a really great job at pivoting at a time where a lot of businesses had to do that in the past uh, year or so. So I applaud Gina and Beth for that. Um, I think that if the board just came to some type of middle ground and worked with Riverwinds, um, that they could resolve any concerns. I think there's an answer to everything. And I know with my clients, my answer is always yes first before no. And I'm hearing a lot more no than yes. And 
I think that if you all got together and met, you could all do a great job in trying to resolve this and let people get back to being in a great community in Saco and having events. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Uh, up next, I just have uh, Zoom is, is identifier as Christine. Uh, bear with me, folks, a little bit of technical difficulties. It's not showing a uh, not showing an audio output here. We'll come back to that. Uh, up next, Margaret Mills. Margaret, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Thank you for taking my call, uh, Mayor Doyle, and thank you for listening to me, counselors. My name is Margaret Mills. I live at 168 Simpson Road. I um, am, have listened to uh, this meeting tonight, and I think things are very, very simple. Um, River Winds was given the opportunity to have a special contract zone for horses, horse events, and they were given a special contract zone to do weddings, but it seems as though the, the wedding program has turned into Christmas events, private parties, all sorts of activities that were not allowed by their contract zone. Um, their staff and their vendors and their guests are complimenting them on how they run their business. Uh, that may very well be, but in fact, they were not allowed to do these activities according to the contract zone and the contract to zone amendment they have already received. So I'm concerned that while these may be very nice people and be very good at business, they are not following the law as it was presented to them. And I'm concerned that if they, um, I, I'm concerned that they're asking for forgiveness after they've committed the sin, so to speak. My other general comment is that uh, we have comprehensive plan. There's very little of Saco left that's countryside, agricultural, and land preserved. And this is a, I don't know what you call it anymore, C1 zone. I believe it's still called C1. And that is for agricultural use and, and low density residential use is not for businesses. We have a main street that could use some more business. There are empty storefronts on Main Street, but it would be nice to concentrate commercial activity, which I think this is, in a commercial environment. This is an agricultural and low density residential area. In, in our comprehensive plan, it is not a lot, this act, level of activity is not allowed. Thank you for taking my comments. That's all I have to say. Uh, thank you, Margaret. So we're going to try promoting uh, Christine to a panelist um, and see if that gives her the ability to unmute. Christine, if you can please, if you hear us, please uh, unmute. Christine, it appears you might not have a microphone on the device that you're using, or your microphone might be turned off on the device that you're using. Do 
you could try calling in on the number While we're working through the technical issues of Zoom, uh, folks bear with us. Uh, first up, uh, next up, we'll hear from Jessica Snow. Jessica, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the City Council. Hi, my name is Jessica Snow. My address is 339 Main Street in Saco. Um, I work for a caterer who is out of Saco and one of the many vendors that Beth and Gina employ. Uh, if it wasn't for them, we probably wouldn't have as many places to hold our weddings and our events. One thing that I've been really proud about when I notice when I'm working is they're very strict when it comes to liquor consumption. They don't overserve. They make sure they have, when there's weddings, underage children are pointed out so they know what tables that they're at. So that way no one is sneaking anything. Um, I, I just, they always have an eye on everything. They have a great staff here. Uh, it's just, I, I would love to be able to see them continue to hold special events, even other than weddings, you know, there's half the amount of people to these music events coming than there is at the weddings. And there's never been an issue. We've never had police here. I'm typically here every Saturday working a wedding and there's not been any concern. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd point that out that they do run a very sh sh um, strict business here, tight ship. And I just want them to be noticed for that. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, I was not. Up next, we have Hector. Hector, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Yeah, this is Hector Pickard. I live at 580 Boom Road, which is just down the street. I can walk by it anytime I want. Um, the place is beautiful. I grew up here. Um, people should be allowed to come down here and enjoy the views. They do a great job. I've never seen an issue with traffic. I I have a big porch in my back house and uh, nobody's ever heard or complained about the music or anything going on down here. This place is employing people. It's fresh air for the public. People should come enjoy this instead of worry about what they're doing here. Come see what they're doing and have fun. They do a great job here. And I just think that the neighbors should have a little input on this. They're not hurting anybody. I, I believe they should be allowed to keep doing what they're doing. That's all I have. Thank you, Hector. Okay, we're gonna try this, I think, again. Christine, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. My name is Christine Corrales Paul. I live at 19 Union Street in Saco. I'm an associate broker and also a member of the Biddeford Saco Chamber of Commerce. I've attended several events um, last year. I found them to be very well run, very well organized, uh, utilizing local vendors and hiring local people. I also, like Cynthia had said, is I'm very pro business. I found the events were very family friendly. In fact, I brought my 10 year old son to a few. He had a great time. 
you don't get a vibe of a heavy, loud atmosphere, but more of a reception, wedding reception vibe, even at these private events, uh, these events. Um, and it's also a relatively short season for them. Um, so they only get to really hold a few. I think that we should be able to come to some common ground that could make everybody happy. Uh, I find it to be a great place to network. They're attended by great local people, a lot of business owners. So I personally enjoy socializing. Um, it's not, um, it's very mellow and joyful scene. And there's also plenty of parking. Uh, the restrooms are beautiful and clean. Um, and being in the real estate industry, you know, I'm seeing what's happening with a lot of large parcels of land. And to see this 160 acres of aesthetic beauty, beautiful place to watch a sunset. Um, the events end fairly early as well. They're not going into the night. Um, so, and they are very well run. I know Gina and Beth, and they run a very tight ship, like someone else had said as well. So, I think it's something that we as a city should be for. Um, and uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for working with us through the technical issues. Up next, we have a Zoom identifier, Danielle. Danielle, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the I'm record here. and present your comments to the city council. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, yes. Um, Danielle Foss, I live at 27 Simpson Road, Saco. I've been there for about 18 years and um, had numerous neighbors around the area of Simpson Road up to Ginger Lane Road saying the noise has never been an issue. Um, I've known Beth and her family and the events that have gone on at Riverwinds and um, her manager, Gina, and there's nothing but um, a classy events going on and complying with all the rules. Anytime something has been brought up, they've been trying to do the right thing, um, create a positive environment for the town of Saco. Um, Nobody has a problem when she sponsors the softball team for Little League and her husband has his name on the back, but or sponsors money at Thornton Academy or has the inquire in her barn, which creates a positive environment for the whole town to listen to. And what a privilege to have with her 100 acres behind her yard that abuts to the river, cows, pigs, horses, chickens, seems like a very positive environment for children in the town to go forward. So I'm in full support of promoting her business going forward. And I hope that we can come with some type of compromise because it would be an insult to the town of Saco to keep finding something wrong with her business. And that's it. Thank you, Danielle. Up next, we have Sheila speaking. Sheila, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Okay. Oh, okay. And I'm um, now? Okay. We can hear you. So as soon as you start Hi. speaking, the My timer will start Sheila speaking. I'm at 21 Ryan Road in Saco, and I've lived here for over 20 years. Um, we were introduced to River Winds a few years ago to help out with some of their events, to see us do our hot dogs and sausage, which we've done in town. And um, I just I just wanted to put my my comments in as far as the, um, this atmosphere is just a, a beautiful atmosphere that they are sharing with the public. I, I look at it more in that venue rather than a, a big business. They're not, they're not making a ton of money on these events. It's they're sharing a beautiful property with people there are families, young children, people bring their pets. It's just a, a beautiful venue, uh, peaceful. The acoustic music, it's generally uh, two guitar players, maybe one guitar player. It's never been loud. Um, and there's just, it's just, it's just a very uh, chill kind of atmosphere. And I, I think it's, I'm also very business friendly as far as um, small businesses, um, being a small business owner myself. And I just think that, there should be no reason. There's no disruption to anyone around. Um, you've heard from residents that 
live right next door that don't have an issue with the noise. Um, this is not this is not down Old Orchard Beach where people are hooting and hollering until all hours. I mean, by nine thirty, you know, we're we're old. We want to go to bed. So um, I just wanted to say how I felt as far as the. Um, it, it is a classy organization. It, it welcomes all people. And um, I would hate to see it not be available for the public. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, up next, we'll hear from Janet Keith. Janet, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Hello, uh, my name is actually Ryan Farr. It's the wife's uh, email, so forgive me on that. I am uh, been an employee of Riverwinds Farm for almost four years now, and everybody else here has spoken to the beauty and the ambiance of the place. So I won't take up any more time, but I can, you know, again, just speak to the caliber of the staff. Uh, every, there isn't a detail that is, that is overlooked, um, you know, from our, the security that we hire out to, uh, what is more worrisome to me is just the level of regulations that, you know, get placed on businesses, especially in this day and age where business is, really getting something that's challenging. We need to be able to promote uh, promote and give the flexibility to these new up and coming businesses to, to be more flexible and, and creative. Um, but uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ryan. And, and can you, will you just state your address again, please? 86 Jenkins Road, Saka. Thank you. Okay, we have uh Three remaining hands from folks that have already provided public comment for this evening. Uh, so we will not be going through a round two. Uh, we will hear from Gina Martinez. Gina, you've been allowed to uh, unmute. Please go ahead and do so. Uh, state your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Hi there, Gina Martinez. I'm representing 121 Loudon Road. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> um, well, um, I, I'd like to address the comment made by um, Margaret Mills. Um, she said that we were operating illegally and that frightens me when people from the public who might have never stepped foot on the property or attended an event or a, a, even a public show stated we were operating illegally. As Councilman Archer read, in September 5th, 2017, we're a place of public gatherings such as weddings, graduations, course shows, anniversaries, and similar events. A, public, a, pl a place of public assembly may include facilities for eating and drinking for overnight accommodations, provided that the required licenses and permits have been issued by applicable agencies. And I don't wanna repeat the meeting that we had back in March, but we have all our licenses in place. We have our special entertainment permit since day one. We've had our licenses from Bablo, which is um, for our catering, as well as self-sponsored event catering that the state does allow. And the line in the contract zone that says and similar events is what we thought was going to be permissible to do when we found um, during COVID all the weddings and private events were either bailing out or canceling. 
And it was a, a good marketing tool for us. It allowed the public to use the space when traditionally they wouldn't have been able to use the space unless they rented out the property. The self-sponsored events have no negative impact on the community. We have standard operational procedures and they're the same as if the event was hosted by a client. The traffic pattern is the same. And I think you heard that the duration of these events is, is much less than say an event on site here, such as a wedding. We hire tailor-made event security and Tim Smith spoke at our March meeting. We usually have three staff help us valet cars, walk the property, ID folks, and they do all types of, uh, all the aspects of event security. Perhaps some of the folks who have made some of the comments that have never been here would like a site visit. I'd be happy to tour these people and show them around the property. Uh, the Austin family is the second largest family private, uh, landowner here in Saco, I was told. I haven't researched that, but that's what I've been told. It's 166 acres. Um, we obey the quiet time of 10 p.m. We obey our capacity limits uh, set by the fire marshal. And although the state allows 100 self-sponsored shows, we know that in May to November 15th, that would be an impossibility. As a matter of fact, the weddings that we have booked, if they stay on the books, will take us right through October 30th. We'd be hard pressed to have a private show. I mean, a public show this season. And I think what we did last year, as I've explained, was we did the same thing every other business did. We tried to shift and pivot to stay afloat. Beth kept all of us on payroll and employed. We kept some of our vendors employed on a, a smaller scale. And some of the performers who did uh, perform here to the public were actually booked to perform at weddings we negotiated with them so that they could keep their date. And I just, again, would welcome anybody who hasn't been here. The very first meeting I zoomed in on, an opening comment from somebody who had a lot of negative remarks was, I've never been there, but as far as the sprinkler situation goes, we've beat that one to death. Uh, Darren Granada has been out here three times. The barn does not have to be sprinkled. We do not go over 300 people. And we have two egresses, 11 feet wide and four man doors. And uh, we have plenty of parking. I wasn't aware uh, someone said somebody went through their barn or went uh, parked in their parking lot. Um, it might be a signage issue and we'd be happy to rectify that. It's first I'm hearing of something like that. And I hope that um, the council will consider moving forward and giving us the opportunity that if we do have a situation where business is on the decline or the downswing, say for the wedding industry, although they tell me it is recession proof, um, we would like an opportunity to be able to still use the property and have events, especially the Christmas event with the course drawn carriage and the Thornton Academy carolers and the s'mores bar and the hot chocolate. The kids loved it. We had Mr. and Mrs. Claus. It was really a great event. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Uh, up next is Inga Brown. Uh, Inga, if you can just state your name and address for the record. And uh, I believe you have already provided public comment for tonight's meeting regarding this specific issue. And in accordance with the rules and order of business for the city council, the, the discussion at hearings uh, is related to the same rules uh, as the city council. So you have been provided your three minutes of public comment. Uh, in the in the email that you sent to Brian, asking him to read uh, public comment into the record for tonight's meeting. Uh, 
So I, I, I hope that suffices. Mr. Mayor, no, Ms. Mr. Brown. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. I appreciate that. My letter that I submitted um, to be read during the open public comments were in reference to the lack of process and uh, submissions to the packet this evening. And I explained in that letter that I uh, would talk at the public hearing this evening related to the amendment on the table. And I have comments to share regarding the contract zone amendment on the table. My comments are not related to the letter that I sent to Mr. Keenrath for the opening public comments. Fair enough, then please state your name and address for the record. As long as your comments are not repetitive to the testimony you've already submitted to City Administrator Canrath, uh, if we go down that road, uh, obviously uh, we 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 may cut the the public comments short. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that, and I also uh, respect the. Um, need to make that clear about the difference. So my name is Inga Brown. I live at 161 Simpson Road um, and um, have several comments to make about this evening. So um, the public comments so far this evening, I think are extremely valuable and very revealing. Saco clearly has a thirst for a venue where local folks can um, let down their hair, can have food, can be in a safe environment, in a beautiful environment. You have heard from vendors, from employees, from folks related to the, the business and commercial side um, of Riverwinds. And clearly, Miss Austin is a very skilled and talented uh, events organizer. And, and on that regard, I respect her very much as well as her events manager, Ms. Martinez. I would like to refer the council to this. I would please urge the council to review the March 16th planning board meeting in which the planning board unanimous, unanimously uh, found a negative finding on the four standards. Is the land with an unusual nature or location? No. Is it consistent with the comprehensive plan? No. Is it consistent with, but not limited to, the existing uses and permitted uses within the original zone? No. That the conditions proposed are sufficient to meet the intent of this section? No. So please, Council, please review that meeting. I think you would find it extremely helpful. You would also hear Ms. Martinez um, eloquently speak about all of the events that Riverwinds has presented. Many of these events were non-permitted, were events that were in violation. Many of the speakers this evening who talked about the music events that they enjoyed, and I respect their um, thoughts and feelings about how how uh, how beautiful the pa the parcel is and how much they enjoyed that space. But many of these events were um, non-permitted events per the contract zone. When you think about tonight's testimony and all of the passionate uh, thoughts that you've heard tonight from Saco residents, please remember, this is not a business on Main Street. This is not a business on Route 1. This is not a business in a mixed commercial zone. This is the rural conservation zone. We have an obligation through the comprehensive plan to do the following, and I quote, to accommodate good quality commercial development in appropriate locations and to discourage commercial uses in inappropriate locations. A policy of the city is to avoid commercial activities within residential neighborhoods. The comprehensive plan from 2011, we have standards to meet with recreation and open space, to maintain areas west of the turnpike as rural, uh, to maintain a rural pattern of use, to protect agricultural, forest, natural resource lands. I'm sure the council remembers that on September 21st, 2020, we signed a declaration, a resolution endorsing the declaration of a climate emergency. We are obligated to be thoughtful about our natural resources, about our patterns of traffic, how we facilitate and train our community of what uses are appropriate in what zone. Um, 
I am extremely um, concerned that um, a contract zone in this rural residential area, one that is already has a pattern of violations and they are violations of the contract zone. Weddings, reunions, uh, parties, private events are permitted under this contract zone. Open to the public events are not permitted. I would refer you in your packet this evening to page 24. City engineer Joe Leverrier says it the best. Does the contract zone have any restrictions on the number of events each year, timing of events, or the limit on the number of attendees? Is the current facility in good standing with any other conditions of the current contract zone? Are there any restrictions on these events? The number of attendees are particularly important with respect to traffic generation and impacts to neighbors, as well as adequacy of existing water supply and wastewater disposal facilities. The list goes on and on of all of the incomplete information regarding site plan, uh, water quality, water adequacy, traffic. Um, and so I urge you please review all of the information that you do have. And unfortunately, as I stated earlier, many pieces of information, of information are not in the packet this evening. Um, I would like to just close that um, no further expansion of activities should be permitted for River Winds until they have fully met their obligations under the current contract zone. And I would ask you on July 12th to re-examine the contract zone agreement itself. This is the time for you as a council to tighten the contract zone. Every contract zone has limits on attendees, on traffic, on the number of events, the scope of events. And this is really critical. As you can see this evening that we sort of have a nebulous and very hard to enforce situation uh, on Loudoun Road. Um, with that, I will close, but I urge you very much to review the March 16th planning board and their unanimous negative recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Anger. Uh, up next, Uh, we'll hear from Beth Austin. Beth, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Oh, there we go. We can hear you. Hi. Hi, this is Beth Austin. I live at 139 Loudon Road, and I would like to contest some of the comments coming from um, Inga Brown. I was not aware that having a music event was not a similar event. And I full heartedly would not be breaking any rules if I knew that that were true. So I, when I talked to Bob about getting this approval, that was one of the things we talked about. If I had an idea of something I wanted to do a little bit different, that, that would follow under similar events. And I also would like to um, say that nothing has changed. And find that I think that was a, a misconception to have the planning board find all of those negative comments because I have already passed comprehensive plan to have the event garden that I have now. So to change a, um, to fill in where a wedding has canceled with a little tiny music show that isn't as long as a wedding, I don't find it to be a, a hardship. And she's talking about all kinds of other things that don't have anything to do with what we're talking about tonight. I have been working with the city to come into compliance and make sure that I have everything together. And the bathroom issue is something that we can talk about another time, but the bathroom that I have now is not a hardship for someone to use. If you've asked anybody that has ever been there. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Beth. That was really good. Uh, again, folks, if you have your raise, if your hand is raised and you've already spoken, we're not going to go back and forth uh, uh, over comments that folks have said uh, to and at other speakers. So, uh, uh, up next, that hasn't spoken yet, uh, we will hear from William Mann. William Mann, you've been uh, allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and councilors. Uh, my name is Bill Mann. I am the, uh, my address is 90 Roaring Brook Road in Portland, Maine, and I'm the former economic development director in Saco. I think you have a very difficult uh, decision to make tonight because in the role that I had in Saco and in the role I have in another community today, promoting business is what we do. But the difficult work of economic development is balancing the, the rules and adherence to the rules, the impacts on neighbors, and in a contract zone um, that has already been approved, it seems as though there's been, I don't know a better way to describe it than mission creep. It expands a little bit, then it expands a little bit more. And uh, it's probably a wonderful experience for the people attending but I'm not sure that's the case for all of the neighbors. Um, and given um, the planning board's findings, I did note, um, and I, I generally agree with uh, many of Ms. Brown's uh, comments. I did not see any commentary from the city attorney in the packet. And I think he's weighed in on this very point about um, activities occurring that were not specifically approved or allowed on the initial approval of the contract zone and any other amendments. And I think there have been at least one or two since the original approval. Uh, I wish you well with your deliberations. Have a good evening. Thank you, Bill. We will hear from Beth Austin again. Hi. Beth, in, in, in accordance with the rules, uh, you're allowed to, uh, on page 23 of the council rules in order of business, the applicant or appellant is given the opportunity for rebuttal or concluding comments. Uh, so. At this time, if you have concluding comments or, or you want to rebut any inaccurate information, now is the time. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you. Um, I forgot to mention that I did have two other letters that didn't make it into the packet, I guess, um, from my immediate neighbors, like 100 yards away. Um, Mrs. You, Joan you Landry. can feel free to pass those. You can feel free to pass those on to City Administrator Canrath or those folks can come at the next meeting and, and during public comment and provide their, their uh, comments, uh, or you can send it to city administrator Canrath for the pack. Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to say city that. Administrator that Canrath. Never yeah, just Mr. Mayor, just also a quick note that you know, public comment on, on either side is not included in the council packets. Submission uh, can be sent to me to read or directed to the council, but um, these written communications are not included in the council packets to go out on Thursday afternoons. Thank you. I just Beth, were you to able say, to get that? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say okay. that two of my immediate neighbors have said I've never bothered them, actually more than two, and that they enjoy listening to the music on their back decks. And um, I, I find it impossible to believe that people four miles away can have such an impact on how I run my business 
and find it very frustrating that they've never been there and that they would say such horrible things. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, at this time, uh, we have no hands raised from any uh, folks that haven't spoken already. Uh, and therefore, uh, Council Arch. Yeah, hold on, I'm just, uh, scrolling through pages. <laughs> All right, I move to close the public hearing and to schedule the final reading for July 12th, 2021. Motion's been made by Council Archer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Berman to close the public hearing and set final reading for July 12th. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, a roll call vote on closing the public hearing. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to close a public hearing at 8 01 p.m. Uh, up next is item C a public hearing, a zone change request for 372 Main Street. Councillor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Josh Waterhouse, DBA. JW Group LLC owns the property at 372 Main Street, a former doctor's office, currently a five unit apartment building. Mr. Waterhouse seeks a rezoning that would enable the number of units within the multifamily dwelling to increase from six to 10. The building is in the medium density residential MDR zone with the new zoning map and ordinance. Multifamily dwellings of three to eight units are possible at a density of 5,000 square per, per unit. Six units would be possible for the 30,492 square foot parcel. If the parcel is rezoned to high density residential, multifamily dwelling units of three to eight, uh, dwellings of three to eight units and multifamily dwellings of greater than eight unit buildings would each be a conditional use. The minimum lot area per dwelling unit would be 3,000 square feet. So up to 10 units would be possible. The item was reviewed by the planning board at its March 30th meeting. After discussion and a public hearing, the board voted to forward a negative recommendation, recommendation to the council. I move to open the public hearing. Motion's been made by Councilor McPhail. Is there a second? I'll second, second. that. Oop. Second by Councilor Hatch to open the public hearing. Uh, any discussion on open the public hearing? Roll call vote, Councilor Archer. Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to open the public hearing at 8 03 p.m. Members of the public who wish to speak on the zone change request at 372 Main Street. Please use the raise hand feature of the Zoom platform or star nine, and you'll be unmuted to speak to the council. Uh, up first, we will hear from the applicant, uh, Josh Waterhouse. Josh, you've been asked to unmute. Please go ahead and state your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Uh, Joshua Waterhouse, 506 Ferry Road in Saco. Um, Good evening, Mr. Mayor and the Council. I am the owner of 372 Main Street and a small business owner in Saco. 372 Main Street is, is an exceptional property with an abundance of parking situated on Route 1. The inclusion in the HDR zone allows the property to make the repairs necessary for a building in great need. It is the perfect property to be included in the HDR zone as it is a Main Street property with ample existing parking within walking of downtown. This property checks all the boxes for Sockwell's goals and the need for increased density in the downtown. We believe that this property, which abuts the HDR zone, will achieve what the city has been working towards to bring affordable housing downtown. 
our goal with going from eight, six to eight units is small, but allows the necessary resources to improve the building. Going from the six units allowed in the MDR to the intended eight units in the HDR will help change the property to a safe, energy efficient home for families and professionals to live. I would encourage you to visit the building or would be happy to set up a time to do a site walk to show you our plans and what we have accomplished thus far. The city's comprehensive plan objectives are achieved by inclusion in the HDR zone through walkability of Main Street, increasing the density of residential units in existing buildings, decreasing traffic on site when compared to a previous use, allowing for parking downtown, preventing development sprawl, revitalizing an existing building in need of upgrades, turning underutilized upper building stories into apartments and creating an affordable housing local to walk in the downtown area. The trend to, toward walkability in communities continues to increase. In addition to walkability, more and more people are working from home rather than having to go into a traditional office setting. The ability to work from home is a large reason why we see people moving out of big cities and moving to places like Saco. I envision our property lived in by families and professionals wanting to walk to work or to Shaw's to buy groceries, walk to burn schools to drop off their kids and to rapid race at a fun dinner while stopping by Saco Scoop on the way home for an ice cream. This fills a large void in the housing of downtown Saco. Traffic was one of the main concerns at the previous meeting and at the planning board meeting. We had a traffic study completed by Sebago Technics, which shows a reduced amount of traffic this project will create when compared with the five units and large doctor's office that occupied the structure for most of the 1900s and 2000s. The question was raised at the previous council meeting as to why this traffic study was not completed for the planning board. The problem was that we did not go through a typical process to be able to complete this study for the planning board. Over the past two years, things have been very confusing for all due to the COVID crisis, and unfortunately this project being no different. We have previously been communicated by the staff and the planning board initially that this property would be included in the high density zone. After the planning board left it out of the zone, we are again told that it would be included in the high density zone when, this, when sent over to the council for final vote. After this, the process changed to have included and the entry, sorry, after this, the process to have included in the high density zone changed multiple times with finally a plan to have a single planning board meeting for recommendation, then on to the council for three meetings. This process has not been the norm and was confusing, not only us, but for all involved. We are just trying to bring a much needed and large improvement to Main Street. The redevelopment of, Main, of 372 Main Street allows for a downtown property to increase density with ample existing parking. But most importantly, revitalizing a Main Street property in great need of repair. This property has been severely neglected for a number of years, causing a blemish for our Main Street. The redevelopment of 372 Main Street will allow the building to shine once again, providing a beautiful place to live and for all of Saco to enjoy. Due to the age of this building, it takes a large amount of resources to achieve the goals of this project. We are maintaining the historic look of the structure while redeveloping the use. We'll be improving this. We will be reframing the interior of the building, installing all new mechanicals, electrical, plumbing, water, sprinkler and fire suppression systems, insulation, sheetrock and finishes, residing the exterior, repainting, installing energy efficient windows, reglazing exterior windows in the front. These improvements are much needed. In conclusion, I have lived in Saco most of my life and see the huge potential that Saco has. When 372 Main Street is complete, it'll be a property everybody can be proud of and hopefully it'll attract additional investment into our downtown. I hope the council will see my vision revitalizing this property and why the inclusion is necessary and fits into the city's goals, the comprehensive plan, the reason why we went through this process. It truly is a win-win for the city and future and future people moving to our town, which is perfectly suited for the zoning we are requesting. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you very much, Josh. 
Up next, we will hear from Kevin Sutherland. Kevin, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the City Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Kevin Sutherland, 15 North Street. Josh, Josh just said it really well, so I'm not sure I can do any better, but I'm still going to try. Uh, I'm participating this evening to show support for this zoning amendment, uh, zoning map amendment to include map 39 lot 232, also known as 372 Main Street, as part of the high density residential. My property abuts this parcel and is in the high density residential, along with the rest of the stretch on Long North Street. I would suggest the council also consider part as part of this zoning map amendment changes, changing map 39 lot 230 and map 39 lot 231. Those are on the corner of um, Elm and North. Uh, they both abut my property. <clears throat> but th this action would keep consistency with the zone, reduce the number of non-conforming structures but that would require a separate public hearing. So please don't hold up this particular request because of that suggestion. Um, I know the city's working through the comprehensive plan update and will hopefully consider these and other zoning modifications to allow for greater density where city infrastructure already exists. Just two perspectives, the municipal perspective, more units means more value and more value where infrastructure already exists means more tax revenue available to reduce taxes or pay for needed services. From the residential's perspective or the resident's perspective, more units means more options for people to call home. More housing in our downtown means greater density to attract local business and support modal, modal, multimodal travel. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, up next, we'll hear from Scott Smith. Scott, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the City Council. Hi, this is um, Brenda Smith. Um, we're at 384 Main Street in Saco. Um, our concern regarding the um, change in the zoning for that particular site is actually um, just what the other gentleman was suggesting, that then you continue to... Um, create zoning changes um, around that. And so at what point, you know, where do you draw the line? And um, just concerns regarding, you know, degradation of the historic area um, as intended. I think there were things that were done years ago that already sort of um, started us on that path. So I'd hate to see the uh, city sort of go down that road again. Um, and then I do think that, um, you're looking at a lot of, um, that's a very congested corner and, uh, you know, people trying to get in and out of that particular area. I think you're going to run into a lot of issues. So that's really all I have to say on the matter. But thank you for your time. Thank you, Brenda. Seeing no other hands raised, Councilor McPhail. Councilor McPhail, you're muted. Thank you, sorry. I move to close the public hearing and further move to schedule the second and final reading for July 12th, 2021. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Johnston. Uh, any discussion? Again, we're closing the public hearing and setting final reading for July 12th. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, roll call vote. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Uh, a public hearing is closed at 8.14. <clears throat> that brings us to item D of action items, and that is another public hearing for a contract zone at 507 Main Street, page 55 in your packet, and that is Councillor Gunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Applicant Saco Retail Management LLC requests consideration of a contract zone 
that would enable a 5,350 square foot commercial building to replace what has been a pizza hut for several years. The highway business zone allows each of the following use of each of the proposed uses, an eating establishment, a drive through window service and retail. But the applicant seeks to ensure that a drive through is allowed, that parking between the street and building is allowed, and that the drive through lane is allowed to be less than five feet from a property line. This item was reviewed by the planning board at its May 4th meeting. After discussion and a public hearing, the board voted to forward a negative recommendation to the council. The planning board has forwarded a negative recommendation. See minutes of the uh, May 4th, 2021 meeting for more. I move to open the public hearing. Motion has been made by Councilor Gunn to open a public hearing. Seconded by Councilor McPhail to open the public hearing. Any discussion on opening the public hearing? Roll call vote, Councilor Archer. Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to open the public hearing at 8 16 p.m. Members wishing to speak to the City Council on the item of the 507 Main Street contract zone. Please use the raise hand feature of the Zoom platform or star nine, and you'll be unmuted to speak to the council. Those members wishing to speak to the council on 507 Main Street contract zone, please use the raise hand feature of the Zoom platform or star nine, and you'll be unmuted to speak to the council. Uh, up first, we have Ron Giles. Uh, Ron, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the City Council. Yes, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. My name is Ron Giles. I own the property at 491 Main Street in Saco, and which houses the KFC Taco Bell. I've been a franchisee for 40 years and have been at that intersection that long and very concerned of what's happening with this contract zone. Uh, let me just state that the, your comprehensive plan prohibits this. You've revised that, I believe in 2018 with recommendations. Now, 15 years ago, when we tore our building down to put the new one up, we had to adhere to that plan, no parking out front. Just recently had a medical center across the street that used to be Rosa Linda's. They could not put parking out front. Then we had the dentist's office that just got uh, finished built about probably a year ago and no parking out front. So with that said, okay, let me just tell you some of the concerns I have. And I, you've all, I hope, have gotten the packet that we tried to put together. It's not the most professional, but I'm not one of these lawyers that do all this stuff. But the proposed building, or I should say the existing one, Pizza Hut, is 4,116 4, square feet. Had a little bump out, total 43. Now, in the, the developers, these out-of-state developers came in and said that they wanted to tear that down and put the same size building up. That is not true. The building is 50 300, almost 50, 400 square feet. Now, with that said, if you look at the definition of a, and this is with three separate independent businesses, that is a mini strip mall. So what that's going to create, never mind the problem on their lot, 
with the drive through coming in around front, people trying to go on the other side to park and pull out and you get drive through which is going to back up all that traffic out to Shannon Lane. I spent <clears throat> a lot of time years ago helping the city and sold them a building so we could align uh, Hutchins Street and Shannon Lane, okay, and move the light to where it is now, shut my front exit off, and also put the exit where it exists now. I worked with the city back several years ago to work with the other, the well, now it's the dentist office, which was supposed to be CVS, which they were not allowed to put any parking out front had they come and had an easement on my property, okay? Now, the thing is, with all this three, you have two fast food businesses. I don't care which one they want to have. That lot should only have one because the traffic, if you look at the traffic study, it shows a huge increase in traffic. And also, if you also look at it, you'll see uh, how many accidents that have occurred there. Now, this was done two weeks ago at my expense and before tourist season. Now, you've all been by and you know the traffic that's on that Route 1. And what you're trying to do with all this three separate business is put so much more traffic and burden that one small street. It also services all those apartments in the back. So I, I would hope, and, and here again, I refer back to your a comprehensive plan that states, and I've marked off uh, hopefully you reviewed some of that, um, just where it just doesn't permit. Why is some of us have to adhere to the plan and then out-of-state developers come in and they can develop what they'd like? And I don't think that's very fair to the rest of us business people. I'm here. I've been here for 40 years. So I know Saco. And again, I know that intersection really well. So I hope that you would really take in consideration and do not approve this contract zone. Approve for maybe one business with no parking in front, that's fine, but three, and you really got to understand, this is a mini strip mall, which here again, it doesn't cover that under your comprehensive plan. So I thank you very much for listening to what I have to say. And uh, anybody has any questions, I'll certainly try to answer them. Thank you, Ron. Uh, up next, we have Bob Berwick. Bob, you've been allowed to unmute. Please go ahead and do so. State your name and address for the record and present your comments to the city council. Yeah, hi, my name is Bob Berwick. Which is the rear uh, property uh, to the 520, 507 Main Street. Uh, Bob, Bob you, cut out, you cut out for a minute. Can you just restate your... Your address, please. Thank you. Sure. My address is for Settlers Way. Thank you. Uh, I, own I own the property along the rear property line of the 507 Main Street. Uh, I've been following this pretty closely. Um, a couple of big concerns, and, and I am asking the council to oppose uh, graining this contract zone. Um, looking at the plans and looking at what the comprehensive plan is, I don't see anything that makes uh, this development, proposed development, a unique development that requires a contract zone. Um, I, I don't uh, see anything that the developer is trying to put in there 
that would make it an exceptional thing or, uh, you know, be an exceptional ad or grab for the city to have and can brag about. Um, and I, I don't think that the uh, developer has taken consideration um, and they actually the city has taken consideration um, one of the things that is proposed in the contract zone is that is that the city would be granted uh, an easement to the property line uh, along the back of the property. Um, the studies that are justifying that were done 15 years ago and settlers way um, development was not even in existence then. Um, so the impact of the property and, and making decisions on that study are probably outdated. I'm sure they can be updated, but they're outdated at this point. Um, the other concern is the traffic coming on the Smith Lane. I think three businesses going into that facility, um, the amount of traffic has got to double or, or to even quadruple the traffic that coming in the back of the KFC operation. Um, I turn down that Smith Lane every night. It's almost impossible between 5 and 6, 5 and 6.30 to get on that lane in a safe manner uh, with traffic coming out and traffic lining up onto the street already for one drive through. Um, I can just anticipate um, the 29 units in Settler's Way, as well as hundreds of other uh, apartments and condos a little further down Smith, Smith uh, Lane. Um, the folks there, nothing unique about the development, nothing unique about the uh, property that would require a contract zone. Uh, in uh, as the neighboring uh, signed, uh, I agree with the previous speaker that in putting hundreds of more cars, uh, it's something I think the city just doesn't need. Uh, and with that, uh, again, I'll ask the city council to uh, deny the request. Thank you, Bob. Seeing no more hands raised, Councillor Gunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the public hearing and to schedule the final reading for July 12th, 2021. Motion's been made by Councillor Gunn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Berman. Close the public hearing and set final reading for July 12th. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to close the public hearing at 8 28 and set final reading. For July 12th. That brings us to item E of tonight's agenda under action items, and that is a first reading of budget amendment number one for COLA adjustment on page 93 of the packet. Councilor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As part of the fiscal year 2022 budget process, a portion of the COLA was included as part of the approved budget in the individual pay lines. Additional funds were appropriated into payroll contingency to be reserved to bring the COLA to 3% following union negotiations. It is common practice to mirror the COLA received by union and non-union employees. This amendment simply redistributes the increase to the individual pay lines from contingency. It is important to adjust the COLA to the 3% amount to create pay equity between non-union and union employees address uh, compression concerns, and ensure retention of our employees. Be it ordered that the City Council approves the first reading of budget amendment number one, fiscal year 2022, and moves to schedule the second and final reading for June 28, 2021. I move to approve the order. Motion has been made by Councilor McPhail. Is there a second? Second that. Second by Councillor Hatch. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote. Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? 
Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to approve the first reading of budget amendment number one. That uh, takes care of the action items, brings us to item 10 of the agenda. That is new business. Uh, 10A is chapter 118 amendments on page 97 in your packet. Uh, and I believe we'll be getting a presentation from either city administrator Canrath or uh, Chief Clements. Mr. Mayor. So the administrator can rest. Yeah, so we have Chief Clements and we also have uh, Chair Jim Katz available also for discussion. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Berman, you are assigned this as the council liaison. Are you willing <laughs> to stay on as the council liaison? Yes. Thank you. Chief Clements. Commission Chair Katz, thank you uh, both for joining us this evening. Uh, so please take us down through the, the proposed edits uh, with any highlighted areas you'd like to uh, speak on or, or talk about. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would, uh, a lot of the work that was done on this was done by, uh, by Mr. Katz. So. I would certainly open the floor to him. I know that there's some additional changes that we need to make uh, on this, but uh, I'll turn the floor over to him. Thank you very much. Chairman Katz. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> this uh, document that was presented to you uh, was presented to council of your predecessors in November of 2019. And it was basically um, tabled without action because at that time, our request to move the supervision of the Harbor Master from the Public Works Department to the Police Department was not practical because there was no funding in the Police Department at that time. So since then, Chapter 118 has existed as it was until a couple of weeks ago when council made two amendments to that document, two small amendments. In that same time, council did agree in the fiscal 21-22 budget to fund in the police department, the hiring of a harbor master. However, there was no chapter 118 in effect to support that. So we dusted off that document from 2019 and brought it up to date by making changes to eliminate uh, gender specific pronouns, uh, cross some T's and dot some I's, et cetera, and uh, presented that document to Tim Murphy last week. He made some changes to it, which we incorporated, and that's the document that you have in front of you. In the meantime, it came to my attention uh, through Tim Murphy and through Chief Clements that uh, having uh, the Harbor Master uh, be under the supervision of the police chief would run into some conflicts with the law authorizing Harbor Masters, the main law, Title 38. One particular instance of that is that a Harbor Master has the ability to hire a deputy. Well, Chief Clements is going to hire the deputies, not the harbor master. So here's a conflict with a great idea that we had, but we have to work out how to do this in law. And unfortunately, uh, I'm a great typist, but I'm not a lawyer. So what I'm saying is that we need uh, Tim Murphy, Chief Clements, uh, Administrator Kenrath to sit down and come up with a, a chapter 118 uh, specific revisions to that particular conflict, uh, which will be SACO law, and then present that to this council. So that's the conflict we ran into. And uh, now this document that you've received, as far as coastal waters is concerned, 
98% of that meets the requirements of our charter in SACO law, which is to advise the uh, SACO city council on matters relating to the harbor and the river. And we feel that that document does a good job of that. There is just a small uh, section with regard to the harbor master and how the harbor master is chosen and how it is certified uh, and what the specific one or two duties of the harbor master are with regard to uh, uh, choosing his own deputies. Um, aside from that, I think uh, the document as you have it is uh, as near perfect as we can make it. Um, but I do not feel comfortable making those calls. Uh, Chief Clements is the one who has to administer that. He has to have input into that. And uh, that's how we'd like to proceed with this. Uh, given another couple of weeks, perhaps, um, we could come together with those changes. Uh, we have recreated the document from 2019, which was lost. All we had was a PDF. And um, I had to personally reconstruct that. That's why I say I'm a typist. Uh, from a PDF with all the changes that were made at that time. So you have all that in front of you. And uh, I think it's a good document. I think it would be a good harbor regulation as long as we can figure out uh, who's going to hire the harbor master, who's going to supervise the harbor master, and is it going to be done under Title 38 or Title 12 of Maine law? I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them at this time or uh, Chief Clements, if you would like to uh, comment. No, actually, I think Mr. Katz covered it uh, pretty thoroughly. I think uh, I think they, that he did an amazing job on you know cleaning this up and making sure that it meets what the what the river and the harbor needs. Uh, we just ran into a couple of things we got looking at and, and saw and said, "Geez, this is a little bit of a conflict with what the city might have in mind." So. I think we need just to go back and revisit just those small areas with Tim Murphy and see if we can sort those out. Thank you, Chairman Katz. Thank you, Chief Clements, uh, City Administrator Kenrath. So we will see this uh, down the road probably in a, in a couple of weeks uh, with some uh, for a first reading that will incorporate some of the uh, issues that have been brought up as 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 issues. Is that my understanding, City Administrator Kenra? Yes, absolutely. Councilor Berman. Thanks. I just also want to make everyone aware of, of an issue in timing. Current Harbor Master Chad Bourne is resigning effective the end of December. Uh, if this becomes law before he resigns, he would no longer be qualified to hold the office. And there was also a, a desire of the uh, Coastal Waters Commission to have some overlap between the new harbor master and the current harbor master for training and, and for continuity of operations. And so we need to consider both to ensure the new ordinance is in place before the harbor master retires, but also find a way to allow some overlap and, and the current harbor master to continue to serve until the new one is hired. And so I just want to uh, make sure that that's in the, in the mix also. Thank you, Councilor Berman. Uh, any further questions uh, for either City Administrator Canrath, Chief Clements, or Chairman Katz? Councilor Archer? Uh, to address Councilor Burnham's uh, question about timeliness, uh, is there a way that when we finally create the ordinance, if it's approved, uh, to put some kind of time frame, a like we've done 30, 60, 90, find a way that uh, we can do a one time in the ordinance that we submit, just saying that it goes into effect blah, blah, blah. And we'll come up with the right date through more discussion. In accordance with the rules, uh, like the council has done before, you have the, uh, the ability to delay implementation of an ordinance that you create. Yep. Any further questions? Uh, seeing no questions, Chief Clements, Chairman Katz, thank you for joining us this evening. Have a great night. Welcome. Uh, that is all for new business this evening. That brings us to item uh, 11, administrative updates, city administrator Canra. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, starting with uh, Saco Middle School, um, I wanted to say congratulations and thank you to all of the students at Saco Middle School as well as their teachers for all of their hard work in establishing the new trail system behind their school. Um, I was very happy to attend the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony last week to open those trails along with uh, Director Summer and some others from the city as well as on the school side. Um, really a great job and I think a great opportunity for uh, some learning about ecology, trail maintenance, and many other things. So congratulations to everyone at Saco Middle School um, on that achievement. Um, as was said at the top of the, top of the meeting, uh, Saco Main Street, they put on a great event uh, yesterday with the banana split. Um, great attention for our downtown, some great media coverage um, on TV and radio. So thank you to everyone involved there and all of the sponsors for their donations. Really just a great event for our downtown and hope to see some more of that. Uh, just a reminder, next uh, weekend will be the art festival next weekend. Um, one more reminder of a city RFP opportunity that's due later this week. The city is soliciting proposals for tax exempt capital financing for the buyout and upgrade of the city's street lighting infrastructure, including conversion to LED for a reduction in electrical usage. The proposal will cover an estimated 1,425 lighting units with a total financing amount of $502,732. Um, inclusive of 5% contingency. The buyout of the streetlights will be from Central Main Power and the upgrade work will be done by Real Term Energy US. Uh, so please submit proposals via email to our interim finance director uh, by 4 p.m. on June 25th uh, this week. Um, one more reminder, your county uh, public hearing, uh, the county commissioners will be holding uh, another public hearing to solicit feedback. Uh, and gain thoughts on the uses for funding allocated to York County government under the American Rescue Plan Act. This one will be held June 23rd uh, at 10 a.m., 1364 Main Street in Sanford. Written comments, again, may be submitted to uh, the county commissioners by email uh, to kadumont at yorkcountymaine.gov. So I have, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, City Administrator Kenrath. Any questions for, for the City Administrator at this time? No hands raised, uh, moving on to item 12, council discussion and comment. Any council discussion and comment this evening? No council discussion and comment. Uh, we do not have an executive session tonight as the uh, information is not ready to go. Uh, therefore brings us to item 15. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilor McPhail, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Hatch. Uh, any discussion on adjourning? Roll call vote to adjourn. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0 to adjourn at 8.43 p.m. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great evening. Take care.